the splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice, he wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. The splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, that all the earth rejoices, that all the earth rejoices. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice, and trembles at his voice. The splendor of a king, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, it trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice.
welcome to the worship services from the Liberty City Church of Christ, Miami, Florida, and of course the Southside Church of Christ here in the city beautiful of Orlando, Florida. We're so glad to have you with us today, Liberty City. In the wake of the horrific loss of your minister's father, Brother Eric Doss, I'm sure all of you know that Brother Oscar Doss, his wonderful loving father passed away last Saturday. Brother Dawes and the Dawes family buried him on yesterday, and he asked me to stand in for him. Nobody can replace Brother Dawes. I'm just standing in for Brother Dawes to encourage you on this beautiful Lord's Day, Valentine's Day, Sunday morning. And to the great uh, Minister Emeritus, Brother Freeman White, and the White family and the entire Liberty City family, welcome. God bless you and keep you. Please pray for Brother Dawes and the uh, family in this time of their bereavement. Beloved, also welcome Southside and beyond. It's another beautiful Lord's Day. Let's open our service, Southside and Liberty City. This is the way we open every service here at Southside. When you talk with God, no breath is lost. When you walk with God, no strength is lost. When you wait for God, no time is lost. And when you trust in God, your soul will never be lost. Let's do it again for Liberty City Southside. When you talk with God, no breath is lost. When you walk with God, no strength is lost. When you wait for God, no time is lost. And when you trust in God, your soul will never ever be lost. Southside, I want to remind you, you can watch us every Sunday, 11 a.m., every Wednesday night, 7 p.m., Southside Facebook, Southside YouTube channel, Southside website, sscoc.org, and Southside app. Southside, I want to remind everybody that this is Valentine's Day. I know you know that. And happy anniversary this month, to, uh, actually, today, to Courtney and Carrie James. Happy anniversary this month to Clarence and Adrena Wilson and Timothy and Doreen Buchanan. Birthdays, middle of February. Birthdays to the middle, to the end of February. Dana Cromedy, John Davis, Eleanor Waite, Sonia McKenzie, yay! Angelique Reynolds, favorite member. Michelle Tunzo, Amari Harris, Makaya James, happy birthday, Makaya. Casey Whitmore, favorite member. Tristan Bur uh, Barnes, Anderson Moses, young Anderson. I believe he's turning 18 this month. Roland Beard, Joseph Bonin, happy birthday. Milton Scott Jr., Adrena Wilson, Old Mel Watts, happy birthday, Old Mel. Deneen Artley, Keisha Johnson, Eric Williams, and Dry Dwight Newsom Jr. Happy February birthdays to one and to all. Now, beloved, the way we'll do this today, since we have Liberty City uh, online with us, uh, streaming with us, I'm going to try to be good today since we have company uh, watching us. Uh, I do my best, Liberty City, but when it comes time to collection, uh, you commune with us as usual, but when it comes time to collection, We'll put up your website so you can give your contribution, your offering, your tithes, your offerings uh, to the Liberty City uh, online apparatuses. And of course, Southside, you continue to give on our Southside online venues. Brother Dawes also will be at the building next Saturday, uh, the 20th of February, to receive your lay-by if you are not able to give online. So God bless you. And keep you beloved. If you would be so beneficently kind, allow Brother Leonard to summon your senses and invite your spiritual intellect to the gospel according to John chapter 3 and verse number 16. John 3 16. Very arguably one of the most familiar verses in all of the Bible. On this Valentine's Day 2021. I want to use as a hallway to walk for a few phonetic moments this morning, John chapter 3, verse number 16. And you will find these words, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have 
everlasting life. Uh, my sermonic soliloquy, my sermonic diatribe is centered around this phrase, for God so loved the world. And so this morning, I want to tell you, Liberty City and Southside, Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. That's my subject today. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. Beloved, we read from the pen of the great apostolos of old, John the Apostle. John records this verse. That is the epicenter of the Bible. John records his verse that is the Magna Carta for salvation. Uh, John records this standard bearer verse in all of scripture. For this verse, John 3.16, inculcates. This verse uh, encompasses the entire will in the word of God can be condensed and concise to John 3.16. This verse, this verse beloved, registers, reveals the unconditional, unfathomable, and incalculable, unrequisite love of Almighty God. Yes, it's an indisputable, undeniable, ungetaroundable fact that Jesus loves me. This I know. How do you know? Because the Bible tells me so. God loves us. Jesus loved us enough to die for us. On this Valentine's Day, some of you are already upset because your boo, your pie, your sugar, your strawberry, your muse, your baby, your baby, your honey, your sweetheart, your main squeeze has disappointed you by what you did or didn't get on Valentine's Day. Some of you already mad and upset because you feel like maybe, possibly, nobody loves you. But I come here today to tell you Jesus loves you. And how do you know? Because the Bible tells me so. God's love did not come through Cupid, but God's love came through Jesus. It didn't come through an arrow. It came by the cross. It didn't come by card and candy. It, it came by Jesus Christ. God's love didn't come in a balloon. It came in a little baby in Bethlehem. God loves us. Jesus loves me. This I know. We did not deserve his love. We did nothing to merit his love. We did nothing to earn his love. You can't buy God's love. You can't, you can't sell God's love. You can't order God's love on Amazon. You can't, they don't sell God's love at Walmart. He loves me. He died for me. He saved me. This I know. Because the Bible tells me so. The Greeks had four words for love. First was eros. So where we get the English word uh, erotica from. Uh, uh, eros is the kind of love that's not mentioned in the Bible. It's a feely, touchy, intimate, emotional, physical, a sexual kind of love. Second kind of love the Greeks called were phileo. That's what we get in eastern Pennsylvania, that prominent urban city called Philadelphia, because uh, phileo in Philadelphia means brotherly love. It's a love that's centered around friendship. It's a fraternal kind of love. Then they had a word called sargese. That's, that's family love. That's pedigree love. That's DNA kind of love. And then the last kind of love the Greeks talked about in the word used in John 3.16 is agape love. Agape is unconditional. It's eternal. It's lasting. It's sacrificial kind of love. See, agape love has nothing to do with the one being loved, but agape love is all about the character of the one doing the loving. I wish I had a church. Now, I live in a city 
where I preach every Sunday morning, they say amen even in the living room. So y'all help a brother out here this morning. You may be totally unworthy of agape love, but agape love has nothing to do with the object of the love. Agape love has everything to do with the character of God who's doing the loving. God loves us. Jesus loves Hear me now. Hear me well. Jesus and God loves us. When you get up in the morning, he just loves us. All day long to the setting of the sun, he just loves us. When you go to bed at night, he just loves us. When you're doing things you got no business doing, he just loves us. When you go places you got no business being, he just loves us. When you act in ways that displease him, he just loves us. When we are unlovable, when we are stubborn, when we are disobedient, when we are trifling, when we are wretched, when we are stiff-necked, when we don't walk right or talk right, when we don't give right or forgive right, God still loves us. If there was one word, if you only had one word to define God's nature and define who God is, that one word would be love. Oh, I'm about to get happy here. He don't just like me. He loves me. He don't just protect me. God loves me. He, he don't just provide for me. God loves me. He don't just pacify me. God loves me. He, God don't just satisfy me. God loves me. He, he didn't just save me. God loves me. No matter what your education, no matter what level of finance you possess, no matter what the pigmentation of your skin, no matter what status you have with health care, no matter if you're on the in the valley or on the mountain, no matter what your social strata is, no matter where your geographical location is, God loves you. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. I want to drop three quick alliterations on your Liberty City and Southside, and then this lesson shall be yours. Uh, it's a quick expositor of the text. We're not going nowhere else but John 3.16. I just want to unpack that verse and practically and hopefully leave us a little better than when we started. The first point, alliteration I get out of John 3.16 is God's love is global. His love is global. It's universal. How do you know that, brother? It's right in the verse. God so loved the world. His love is universal. His love is global. God loves everybody. He loves the world. Some of us think God's love is for the nice church people. No, the Bible said God so loved the world. Red, yellow, black, and white. All the precious in his sight. God loves the drug addict. God loves the AIDS infected. God loves the Haitians. God loves the Africans. God loves the Jamaicans. God loves the Mexicans. God loves the Colombians. God loves the Puerto Ricans. God loves the African Americans. God loves the Euro Europeans. God loves the, the, the Caucasian. God loves everybody. God not only loves everybody, but he loves everybody everywhere. God loves the Republicans. God loves the Democrats. God loves the Trump MAGA supporters. God loves the Muslims. God loves the pen those in the penitentiary. God loves those who walk the street corner and smoke crack. God loves those girls that work in the red light district. God loves those young ladies who make it rain. God loves the young lady who has seven babies by nine men. God loves rich folk. God loves poor folk. God loves educated folk. God loves illiterate folk. God loves liars. God loves crooks. 
God loves the homeless. God loves the adulterer. God loves the fornicator. God loves the homosexual. God loves those who are divorced. God, every hour, every day, every second, every minute, there's never a time when God does not love us. And that love is global. God's love is universal. God loves everybody. There's one thing I noticed in my years of living here in America. I think some people in America think God loves that God is an American. No, the Bible said he loves the whole world. And I'm proud of my country. We live nowhere else. Uh, we, we have this superiority complex, though. We have one of our most notable songs is God Bless America. If you're not careful, you'll think he'll bless America, but he won't bless China, or he won't bless Russia, or he won't bless Cuba. God's son was sent because God loves the world. God don't just love America. God's love is universal. God so loved the world. And I love America, but I love God more. Yeah, the flag, the flag is not the cross. The Constitution is not the Bible. God loves not just America. His love is global. He loves the world. You unpack that verse. For God so loved the world. That, that word, so love the world. So there is a demonstrative adverb in, in front of the word love, which is a verb. Listen to me. So, God so love is a demonstrative adverb right before another word, a verb, love. And that word love, there's an aorist tense in the active voice, which means God so loved the world, what that really means is his love for the world or humanity is infinite. It's, it's everlasting and indescribable. God, we cannot even comprehend how much God loves the world. See, there's some loves. Anybody can have eros. Anybody can have phileo. Anybody can have sargazi. But only God can possess you with a God pay kind of love. See, only God can love somebody who takes a cigarette butt and put it out on a five-year-old child. I can't love him. It, 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 it's hard for me to love him. It's, only God can love a man that will rape his 13-year-old daughter. Only God can love a man that will lynch somebody because of the color of their skin. Only God can love a man that will put his knee on the neck of a man in handcuffs and watch him suffocate to death. Sometimes in my humanity, I want to kill them folk until I rem I'm reminded to scripture, God loves everybody. Regardless of who you are, where you are, and what you've done. God's love is not just for the nice church people. It's for the whole world. Secondarily, in Liberty City in the South Side, not only is God love global, God's love is sacrificial. Uh, uh, how do you know? It's right there in the verse. I'm not going to know where else. The Bible says God so loved the world, he gave. See, love defined in agape is when you give. Authentic biblical love is not about what you get. It's about what you give. Some of you mad today because you didn't get something. That's how I know you got love wrong. Love is not about what you get. Love, biblically, is about what you give. God so loved the world, he gave. What if everybody in the church stopped being a giver and not a taker? What if everybody in marriage was a giver and not a taker? What if everybody in the family was a giver and not a taker? I came by to tell you that God so loved the world, he gave. Because love is sacrificial, love gives. I've said to you before, I've said to you again, you can give and not love, but you cannot love and not give. Hear me, Liberty City, hear me, Southside. Yeah, you can give and not love, but it's impossible for you to love and not give.
You can't help but give when you love. And when I say give, parents, I'm not talking about giving. I'm not talking about giving two hundred dollar pair of tennis shoes. See, real biblical love. Look at the verse. God gave His Son. God gave Himself to us. So real love is not about giving stuff. Real love is about giving yourself. Even to your spouse or your children. You give, give direction to your child. Give discipline to your child. You're still giving. Give a good example to your child. No substitute can be made with stuff for love. See, God so loved the world that he gave not some of himself. He didn't give most of himself. God so loved the world, he gave all of himself. And here, let me tell you something. Let me hasten to tell you, before you get off track, when you authentically, biblically, scripturally love, you have to risk being hurt, and you have to be risk being rejected. Because once you give all of yourself, sometimes people would abuse it, hurt you, or reject you. And even though God's son, God gave his only begotten son to the world, many, if not most, have rejected him. But God loved us anyhow. He loved us so. He's so sacrificial. Remember first, God's love is global. Secondly, it's sacrificial. He gave the ultimate See, that's what love does. Love is not about card candy and eros and uh, sargazi and uh, phileo. God's love is agape. Jesus died in our place. Jesus was a ransom for our sin. He died on the cross for me. He was my substitute for my sins. He was a propitiation for my sins. And, and God, God made it possible for him to be born. This is why I know Eros has nothing to do with this. Because romantic or sexual love had nothing to do with Jesus getting here. He was not born of a man. He was fathered by the Holy Spirit. There was no intimacy between Mary and Joseph. No sexual uh, activity between Mary and Joseph. Because if Joseph would have been his father, or if a man would have been his father, Jesus would have possessed the sin nature that we possess. And if he had the sin nature like we have, then he would not have been qualified to die for our sin. Came by the table today. Only Jesus could do that. God's love is global. And love, godly love, is sacrificial. Only God sent his only begotten son. He didn't have a room full of sons. He didn't send one of his bald-headed stepchildren. He sent his only love was sent your only and your last and your best. He's the only one who could have done it. Abraham couldn't die for us. He lied and said Sarah was his sister and not his wife. Noah couldn't die for us. Noah got drunk after the flood and right before the reconstruction. David couldn't die for us. He slept with another man's wife and had him killed. Moses couldn't die for us. He struck the rock because he got mad at them, uh, at them Israelites in the desert. Jacob couldn't die for us. He stole his brother's birthright. Uh, Peter couldn't die for us. He liked to root and toot and cuss and shoot. Jeremiah couldn't die for us. He was a paranoid, schizophrenic crybaby. Samson couldn't die for us. Samson had a rendezvous with Delilah. Solomon couldn't die for us. Solomon had 700 concubines and 300 wives. Wesley Leonard couldn't die for us. Wesley Leonard liked too many Krispy Kreme donuts. Only Jesus could die for us. He died in our place because the Bible teaches that love is global. God so loved the world. Quit thinking he just died for the church of Christ. Quit thinking he just died for good church folk. God died for everybody. And then secondly, love is sacrificial. Love gives what ruins any relationship when somebody's a taker and the other person does all the giving. Lastly, 
Not only love is global, not only is it sacrificial, but love is personal. Look how the Bible captures this verse. The Bible says, whosoever will. The Bible uh, lets us know it inculcates any and everybody. It's personal to you and I. He does not send a generic invitation. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him, not on him, in him, there's a difference between being on something and in something. If you own the house, when the hurricane comes, you're in trouble. But if you're in the house, you say, oh, y'all wish I had a church in here. Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It's personal. Whosoever, that whosoever makes God inclusive and not exclusive. Too many times we made religion exclusive instead of inclusive. Yeah, that means the murderer is in that whosoever. The, the homosexual is in that whosoever. The adulterator is in that whosoever. The liar is whosoever. The cheater is in that category of whosoever. The prodigal son, even today, prodigal sons and daughters, you are in that category of whosoever. The gossiper, the bite biter, the backstabber, Donald Trump, all of us are in that whosoever. Sometimes we get mad because we don't want God to be a whosoever God. But the same blood that saved you, it'll save whosoever. Yes, God's love is global. Yes, God love is sacrificial. And yes, God love is personal. I want to see to my seat. It's Valentine's Day. I got on my bright red. It's pretty. It's, it's eye-catching. Uh, it, it, it's uh, attention grabbing. Because love is defined by God. But if love had a color ascribed to it, it would be red. And the reason why love will be, the color of love will be red, it stands for blood. I sit to my seat when I tell you this story. That's a true story. On September 11, 2001, 9-11, when those twin towers came falling down in New York City, when terrorists from the Middle East attacked America. This is a true story of a woman who flown to New York on September the 10th. She landed, stayed in a hotel, rented a car. She had a meeting in the North Tower that morning of September 11. She got in a rental car that morning, headed to the North Tower. Unexplainably, for no reason seemingly, her nose started to bleed. It was a bad nosebleed. Blood got on her blouse. Blood even got on her skirt. She looked down, she said, no way I can go to the Twin Tower with all this blood on me. She turned around and she went back to the hotel to change her clothes. When she walked in the hotel, the people in the hotel said, man, we thought you checked out. We, we thought you were gone, going to your meeting and headed back to your city. And the clerk said, but I see you got blood all over you. The lady said, can, can I just change my clothes? While she was changing her clothes, she turned on the TV and saw an airplane hit the North Tower. It immediately occurred to her that if she'd gone to the meeting she's supposed to be going to, more than likely she would have perished. But because her nose began to bleed, because she was covered with blood, <laughs> y'all didn't hear what I'm saying, because she had blood all over her, it was the blood that saved her. Y'all not hear what I'm saying? Because she had blood on her blouse. She had blood on her skirt. She had blood on her legs. She had blood on her hands. It was the blood that saved her. I'm trying to tell you today, beloved, it's the blood that saves us. It was her blood that day, but it was Jesus' blood 2,000 years ago. We're covered by the blood. It's the blood that saves us. And the blood saves us because the blood covers us. And the blood covers us because God 
so loved the world. His love is global, his love is sacrificial, and his love is personal. So let it be written, so let it be done. The grass withers, the flower fadeth away, but the words of God shall stand forever. Let me invite you to Jesus. Hear his gospel, the good news of his death, burial, and resurrection. Believe that with all of your heart. Repent of your sins, your ways of degradation and iniquity. I, I need you to confess and be audible that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Join him. You must not all be, not need be. You must be baptized, buried, submerged, immersed in water for the remission, removal, and the eradication of your sin. That will add you to the church. You can't join the church. You have to be added through baptism. And there you're covered by the blood. And you experience true, authentic, godly, agape love. Shall we pray? Father God, we're mindful, we're glad, we're happy, we're thankful. You allowed us to see another day. Please bless and keep us in spite of us, not because of us. We're so thankful that Jesus loves us. We know because the Bible tells us so. Please, Lord, bless Liberty City. Bless Southside, both churches of Christ. Bless Brother Dulce and the Dulce family at the loss of a Brother uh, Oscar Dulce. Please bless the Salters family, Lord. As Brother Tyrone Salters and Sister Alicia Salters lost their father yesterday. Brother Alvin Salters. Please comfort the Salters family as well. Lord, bless all those who lost loved ones. Bless those who are going through the going through. Lord, please hide us behind your cross, cover us with your blood. As we prepare to take of your body and your blood in the Holy Communion. As we prepare to give you our labor, our tithes and offerings, the first fruit of our increase. Please, Lord, accept it in the spirit we give it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, beloved, it's time to commune. We pray by now you secure the piece of unleavened bread. The bread is unleavened, representing the bitter taste uh, of Passover and the bitter, horrific ordeal Jesus went through for the sins of humanity. The cup is red representing, uh, it was wine then, but it represented the blood of Jesus that covers us and forgives us of our sins. Jesus declared in the upper room at the last Passover, do this in remembrance of me. As often as you do this, you shall forfeit death. How often did he do it? The first day of every week. Let us partake of the bread together. Now, beloved, let's partake of the fruit of the vine. God bless you. Now, beloved, it's time to give. It's time to be happy. According to 1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, verse 7 through 9, God loves a cheerful giver. We at Southside, I don't know about y'all in the city, we get happy now. It's time to give. Now, again, Liberty City, go to your website. It should be on the screen. Give online. If you want to give in person, Brother Doss has arranged to be at the church Saturday, and you know how y'all do, those who give in person. But please, if you live in the city, give your money to live in the city. If you're Southside, for God's sake, please give your money to Southside. I love Brother Doss, and I love living in the city. I love from your wife. But Southside, you need to send your money to Southside, and live in the city, send your money to live in the city. So Liberty City, your information is on the screen. Southside, you know this routine. Our information now is on the screen at the bottom of the screen. If you mail in, you're laid by from all over the country. Uh, just you don't want to uh, give online. You don't trust it. You can mail it to the P.O. box you see at the bottom of your screen to my left and your right. Uh, you can mail it in. Don't mail cash. Please mail your secure funds. We'll take it registered and deposit it in your name. Beloved, uh, again, if you need to come by here and get community supplies at the building, we're here Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Saturdays from 9 to 11, Sundays from 9 to 10, 15. Beloved, if you want to drop it off, slide it under the door. Don't leave it in the mailbox. The mailbox does have communion cups, but it does not. We don't want you to leave your lay by. But predominantly Southside, you know our three online giving opportunities. Give a five, by far our most popular, safe and secure. You can see it on your screen. PayPal, safe and secure. You can see it on your screen. Uh, our second most popular is Cash App. Please, you can give it a safe and secure online. These uh, venues keep a running tab of your contributions that you can refer to from time to time. Thank you in advance. Keep your commitment to God. 
Jesus loves us, this I know, for the Bible tells us so. His love is global, his love is sacrificial, and his love is personal. God bless you, God keep you, this is our prayer. We love you, Liberty City. We love you, Southside. Be blessed. Why, Jesus.